What's up, y'all? My name is Alan Sheriff, aka Alan, the Sheriff of all things innovative, and this is the ATS Podcast. Here on the ATS Podcast, we talk about all things science, technology, and psychology related, and it's my hope that I'm making the world a better place, one new episode at a time. Quick updates, make sure you go to alanthesheriff.com and check out some of my Apex merch. Remember, help me help you make the world a better place. Let's get into it. The first subject is science. Now, I read an article from digitaltrends.com, and it talks about NASA's helicopter on Mars becoming the first ever to perform controlled and powered flight on another planet. Now, for some of you who don't remember, this is the same exact helicopter that came off of the Perseverance rover. It's called Ingenuity. So the article points out that given that Ingenuity's flight wasn't in real time, it had to be autonomous, piloted by onboard guidance, navigation, and control systems running various algorithms. So this thing wasn't even flown by humans. Like, this is the first copter to fly on Mars, but I wonder who's going to be the first human to fly one of these things. What made this task even more difficult is that Mars' atmosphere is much more thinner than Earth's, so creating a drone that could get airborne and sustain stable flight was a big challenge to engineers. Ingenuity will also have to perform more flights, each with increasing complexity to provide more data on how to build and design more sophisticated aircraft in future missions to the Red Planet. Oh man, I... (laughs) First, let me point out that um, for all the people out there who like to complain about how this money could have been used for better instances. Forget all of you guys. <laughs> I understand the arguments that you make, but forget all of you guys, all right? The mission was a success, and we just got a copter for the first time off Martian ground. That's freaking awesome. And let me explain to you why it is. Because the more that we invest in activities like these, it will enable us to be able to develop future technologies that will allow us to be able to move throughout and innovate in outer space. I mean, people think, oh man, you spent $80 million on the Ingenuity Copter. Like, what the heck? You're blowing all this money. It could have been used for better cases. Look, a failure is not an option option for NASA. That's, that's the first thing. And second of all, with all of these new things that we're able to accomplish in outer space and on different planets, like how it just came back that the Perseverance rover was able to create oxygen from the Martian atmosphere. Like, dude, we're investing in the survival of our species. I don't know. I guess that's just my personal bias. Like, say what you want. I know that, you know, some people will, you know, put forth the argument, oh, this money could have been used elsewhere. I get it. You know, I get it. I really do. But at the end of the day, in your face, NASA was successful. Forget you guys. <laughs> the only thing I'm mad about is that my drone cost $1,000 though. And that, that their drone costed $80 million, but it had so much sophisticated stuff on it. Like it's an autonomous drone. It has solar panels. It has unique designed rotary blades. Like I want the exact, it just makes me want to throw my drone in the trash can. <laughs> That's the only thing I'm mad about. So I'm putting together a team right now to go march down to NASA headquarters and protest that they should all be designing and creating drones for all of us just like that (laughs) so we don't feel some type of way but no again congratulations to the nasa team this was a huge achievement and um yeah not a waste of money not a waste of money (laughs) all right go technology so i read another article from next web this is the next subject by the way this is technology i read an article from the nextweb.com and it talks about a bill in washington state that's looking to ban gasoline powered vehicles (laughs) <laughs> now, fun fact is that Washington state has actually been trying to deliver clean energy laws for quite a while now. I mean, and and they're actually rivaling with the likes of California, which is pretty interesting, like in and of itself, like, and, and, and a lot of people think that they're kicking their butts, but let's proceed. I don't want to uh, get off topic too much. So the bill requires that all passenger and light duty vehicles sold or registered in 2030 or later to be powered by electricity. And the new bill runs alongside the rollout of a road usage charge so that only when three quarters of the state's vehicles are subject to this road usage charge, this bill will kick in. Money generated from this road toll will be used to invest in transport infrastructure, such as electric car chargers and public transit. Yo, I made a hilarious TikTok about this in the description. You guys, I mean, all of you should just go check it out. Like, I think it's really funny. (laughs) But no, I think this is really ambitious of Washington State, and I'm really proud of them because I look at situations like this, and I always think about the fact that the earth is under extreme circumstances right now. Like if you look at the global warming, I'm pretty sure at this point we're past the point of no return. And so Washington State taking initiative 
and creating you know, a clean energy bill like this, well, not only are they leading the charge on renewable energy, but you know, they're very optimistic and their optimism isn't misplaced. I mean, look, the earth is literally crashing and burning around us. We're past the point of no return. Why not just put forth some, you know, some goals, make them extremely ambitious. And though they may be lofty, it shouldn't stop us from working towards them. I don't think that we should get complacent about this at all. I think that's what a lot of people are having a hard time understanding. I mean, well, not necessarily having a hard time understanding, but I don't think that we should get complacent just because it seems like this goal is unrealistic and, oh, it's going to make the transition process a lot more difficult and we're going to lose, you know, uh, we're going to make things difficult for the fossil fuel industry. Well, that's what we're supposed to be doing because we're all dying here. And <laughs> like our actions are affecting people from uh, affecting people all around the world, you know, so it's only right that we do what we can now to protect the lives of everyone around us. Something I thought about the other day, though, hilariously was imagine, you know, a, a, a dystopian society, you know, where gasoline powered vehicles are banned. And then, you know, you have a cop who pulls up on some guy one day and he's just like, how are you doing today, sir? And he's just like nothing. But the guy's all fidgety in his car. Think about the fact that what's going to come into that police officer's mind as soon as he smells gasoline. <laughs> like, you like, is that gasoline I smell? Out of the car! Like, <laughs> That dude, that dude is not going to have a good day. Like, they just find diesel in the back of your trunk. But nah, just imagine a society like that. But I, th I think a society like that would be awesome. Because imagine a police officer saying, what are you doing? Polluting the atmosphere? You're going to, you're going to uh, uh, climate change jail. Like, I don't know. But <laughs> think about that. Think about that. The last subject is psychology. Now, I read an article from SciPost.com. And this topic's pretty serious. It talks about childhood spankings or slappings that can pave the way for harmful outcomes that are discernible in adolescence. Now, I picked this article because I wanted to be able to focus on, you know, not only developing human beings technologically, but mentally, you know, psychologically. I want to be able to look at the dynamic between the parent and the child. And I think it's extremely important to uh, take note of these interactions so that we are better able to organize ourselves and help teach ourselves what are the best ways we can interact with not only just individual members of society, but our children as well. So I thought it'd be really important to talk about this article today. The article revealed that teens who had been slapped or spanked as children had increased odds of presenting with mental health issues, physical health problems, and defiant behavior. Not only is there no evidence that points towards the benefit of spanking children, but it may also alter the structure of biological processes and contribute to the use of dysfunctional coping strategies. Even though many parents still use the t this disciplinary action because they believe it reduces delinquency, which actually does the exact opposite, we need to better understand successful ways to help parents replace spanking or slapping with non-physical discipline. I came from a very um, a physical disciplinary family, and I can honestly tell you that it, it, it for me, it... I felt myself being more rebellious, you know, and, and don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm not going to say that, you know, I haven't at all had this thought process along with my friends that, you know, it might have necessarily been good for me because it made me not do things that I didn't want to do. But I now know and understand that there could have been a better way for me to understand not to do something, you know, and so I think a lot about the fact that a lot of what I usually did was I matched my parents' emotional behavior. And there was a lot of anger in my family. So it just made me more rebellious. And I think that's extremely important for parents to consider moving forward. What kind of energy are you giving to your children? You know, and are you, not only should you consider the type of energy that you're giving to children, but you should also think about whether or not you're able to sit down with them and have discussions with them and, and, and talk and try to figure out what exactly it is that they're struggling with because you have to address the underlying issue. I think that spanking or slapping your children, taking physical disciplinary action is just another form of uh, imposition. You know, it's, it's like an action that you're taking to make sure that your children conform and it's not healthy. You will have rebellious uh, tendencies, you know, from young individuals. And so I, I just think it's really important to be able to sit down and have those conversations because if we don't, well, then it will result in more, you know, unruly behavior, you know, and, and like it points out in the research, a lot of, you know, young individuals don't have the coping mechanisms to be able to deal with, uh, deal with situations like this. So it's extremely difficult. 
I definitely think that other ways should be found in the future on how to um, take disciplinary action against um, children. Better ways can definitely be, be found. I think for me, primarily, it's just being able to provide them the right type of emotional energy and being able to communicate with them. Like with me, if, you know, someone in my family had sat down with me and say, hey, hey Alan, I want you to be vulnerable. I want you to understand that I'm here for you. Help me understand what exactly it is that's bothering you. And also match that's help me match your energy to make me feel comfortable. I, I, I feel like I, it would have been a lot healthier for me, you know? So I think it's really important to consider that. But yeah, this was a very uh, important study that I wanted to be able to touch upon. Anyway, everyone, that's it for this week's podcast. Make sure you go um, check out the TikTok that I left in the description about the clean energy bill. Don't be like me, kids. Don't go get your Toyota Corolla 2018 (laughs) and be driving around polluting the atmosphere. Go get your electric vehicles because at least by 2030, at least in Washington state, your vehicle will still be street legal. All right. So go check it out and go get your electrical ve- electric vehicles, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in to the ATS podcast. I really, really appreciate it. If you really like my podcast and you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you hit that like, subscribe and notifications button. Uh, so, so you'll be able to get further updates on my episode. And if you're watching this on any of my podcast hosting sites, make sure you either hit that follow or subscribe button. And don't forget to go to alanthesheriff.com and check out some of my merch. I greatly appreciate it. I will see all of you on the next episode of the ATS podcast. Ah!